Welcome everyone to a B-Roll Brothers podcast. This is ABC DVD, an alphabetic journey through two brothers' large movie collection. Every week we'll do a new letter and a new movie. When we get to the end, we'll do it again. This is not a review of our movies. This is more of a discussion of the films we love. Just to be warned, there will be spoilers. So hopefully you've watched the movies and come and listen to talk about them. There will be a quiz at the end. (laughs) So this week, for our first one, we are doing About Time. Well, before we get to About Time, I think we should say hi to everyone. I'm Josh. Oh, yes, and I'm Noah. (laughs) Hello. Hello. So, yes, we are talking about time, and it's about time. It's about time we did this. Yes. uh, It is a romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. It's written Mm -hmm. by Richard Curtis, who you may have known from other romantic comedies like Love Actually, For Wayne's a Funeral, and Pirate Radio. He has a theme, uh, a style. I mean, yes, very much about love and you yeah. know, cheeky humor. Yes, it's, it's kind of like this generation's um, who did like Breakfast Club. Uh, <laughs> this is a good, great star. It stars Donald, yeah. Donald, not Donald, Donald Gleason, who you may have seen as Bill in the Harry Potter movies or in Ex Machina, which is not a com- romantic comedy. Or as General Weasley in the Disney uh, three movies. I've just been handed a note. Breakfast Club was done by John Hughes, and I lose my uh, film nerd cred for forgetting yes. that. John Hughes. <laughs> yes. Um, also starring Rachel McAdams. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was known for originally for Mean Girls. Mm-hmm. She's also been in other things like Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. Uh, this is interestingly her fourth time travel movie. Uh, she was the romantic interest in the Time Traveler's Wife. I've already mentioned Doctor Strange. This one, and was a character, not the love interest, but a character uh, associated with time travel in Midnight at Paris. Mm, so she has a thing. She, she has a, she has a type. She has an un, unwittingly, you know, been typecast as time traveler woman. Mm-hmm. I love a time traveler. <laughs> also uh, starring Bill Nighy from Love Actually and Pirate Radio. And Pirates of the Caribbean. And Pirates of the Caribbean, Caribbean. as... <laughs> Um, Davy Jones. Davy Jones. Davy Jones law. Yeah. So, we love Bill Nighy. Uh, I will always love Bill Nighy in a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, this made eighty-seven million dollars worldwide when okay. it came out. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'm going to go off of a Google uh, <laughs> review because the official Universal review is more of a book report, and I'm not going to read all that. Mm. I use my my review voice. Oh, your review voice. <laughs> when Tim Lake, Donald Gleason, is 21, his father, Bill Nighy, tells him a secret. The men in their family can travel through time. Although he can't change history, Tim revolves... Reading's hard. Reading is hard, especially when your phone wants to talk to you about it. <laughs> Tim resolves to improve his life by getting a girlfriend. He meets Mary, Rachel McAdams, falls in love, finally wins her heart via time travel, and a little cunning. However, as his unusual life progresses, Tim finds that his special ability can't shield him and those he loves from the problems of an ordinary life. Yep. Mm. Do you agree with that definition? I mean, it's, it's a pretty good definition. I mean, it is basically a romantic comedy sci-fi. Um, and the the movie uh, does a good job establishing the rules of this time travel mm-hmm. uh, that the, it's only the men in the family. Yep. And you have to be in a dark place, clench your fist, think of a time, and you go there. And there's no real paradox causing issues. There's no real thing. You just can yep. only go in your own in your own lifetime, mm-hmm. and you can't and, go forward. Only back. And let's. I mean, to start with, it starts with a New Year's Eve party, which. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but our parents never threw a party like that. <laughs> yeah, but we were probably more fuddy duddies compared to these British couple. Of yeah, these British people throw hells of uh, parties and New Year's. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that's when the rules are established with Bill Nighy giving him all the rundown and how you can't kill Hitler and you can't shack up with uh, 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 Helen of Troy. Helen yeah, of Troy. That was the joke. It, it's a very quick and easy um, showing the effects of time travel. That's what I liked about this. Is it didn't belabor the, the point of him going back because every jump back throughout the entire movie is very quick. You You realize very quickly where he is, mm-hmm. what the change is, and then you move on. It, it's not like, oh, let's spin, let's let's right. make a meal of it. It's like, nope, this this is the one thing I changed. It made it better. Mm-hmm. And they do a fun like test run with mm-hmm. the first love interest, which 
I did not realize the first time watching this was Margot Robbie. I did not know that either. When we rewatched it, I was like, oh, crap, that's Margot Robbie. Yes, and this one, she is the love interest. Yeah. You know, get a, a beautiful woman in. And I think they did a really good job to kind of show, like, this is a test run. This is how he's going to figure out what are the limitations on changing things. Well, and it also is a nice establishment of to take away what some would call the creep factor of using your powers to hook up with someone. Mm -hmm. And he proves with Margot Robbie that no amount of time travel can make someone fall in love with you. So when he does use it later on with Rachel McAdams, it's to show that's like, no, she is into him. It's mm -hmm. not the powers. It's just he's allowing situations to roll out naturally, but giving him an advantage of redoing it. No, that's true. And I think it also gets us over kind of like that Groundhog's Day effect mm -hmm. of you can go back and find the perfect day, but if the chemistry is not there, you're never going to change it. Yeah. 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 Which I think then rolls nicely mm -hmm. into moving along into meeting Rachel McAdams for the first time at that dark restaurant. Yeah, I mean, that was a, a really nice meet cute, uh, which is common for uh, romantic comedies. But we do it without seeing her or mm -hmm. him. We don't see the moment. We are brought more intimately just with our sense of sound. Mm -hmm. And this is an actual real restaurant in London, by the way. Okay. Uh, yeah, of uh, having a completely dark um, environment and having the blind waiters serve you. So you, your other senses are heightened versus... And it's not just your sight. I would be terrified to be in that restaurant because I know I would poke myself in the eye with something. We know I am a messy eater at the best of times. <laughs> so yeah. as, as if you were to meet a girl at this yeah. restaurant and you'd come out, yeah. you'd notice all the stains across your yeah. shirt and going, yeah. well, crap, this is over now. Going back to the beginning, uh, it starts with a uh, voiceover. Do you like having voiceovers for exposition and things? Do you think it works in this movie? <laughs> I think it works in this movie. I mean, anytime there's a voiceover, I immediately go to like a Wonders Year thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah, in my youth, this is what I did. I think it works in this one because you need that narrator to kind of push you through mm. the story. Yeah, I agree. Um, but it's not done in an omniscient way where it's like saying, hey, look at this. Yeah. This is going to be an important part. Is it lets mm -hmm. It lets the story play out in, you mm -hmm. know, sections. Yeah. And he uh, starts his powers. I just wrote this down. I, it might just be me thinking too much of Britishness. Uh, he goes into a wardrobe to start his adventure. And it's like, <laughs> oh, oh, is this the line? The witch of the wardrobe? No, oh, no, oh, there's a witch. <laughs> Every British thing needs a wardrobe. They just love their wardrobes. It, does, it doesn't it yeah. does translate over here. It's like, yeah. what is that? Why yeah. would I have that in my room? I have a closet. <laughs> I have a closet. Like a, like a real person. Like a real American. But yeah, but I think also that what it sets up nicely is it doesn't lay out all the rules it mm -hmm. lets to it plants seeds because in mm -hmm. the first meeting of rachel mcdallams there's already a dilemma set up is that his flatmate has an opening that goes horribly wrong and he goes back in time to help his friend and it already sets up like listen you're not going to be able to fix everything you're yeah. going to have to do this or that but in this case he's able to go help his friend but then realizes oh crap I don't have her phone number. I'm going to have to track her down because I really want my flatmate to have this success. Yeah. He makes that decision. Yeah, he, he's trying he's trying to do everything and that realization of you cannot literally be in two places at once even with time travel mm -hmm. and that you have to choose which path you want to go down. Mm -hmm. And in, I think it also shows that he is a good person mm -hmm. because he makes mm -hmm. the sacrifice of losing the girl's phone number to make sure his flatmate has a good first show. Yeah. And I wrote down, Ginger Twerp <laughs> would be the name of my band if I made one. It's <laughs> a good band name. And this is, this is a, I wrote down, this is a common issue, or not issue, but a, a question I had while watching this. Like, how many times has this guy rewatched the same play <laughs> to help others or to get out of awkward things? Because he likes, at least watches this play twice. That's true. To help his friend. And then later on in the movie, there's another play, and I, I kind of watched that play three times because the, yeah, the rule is you can go back in time and end up in a, a spot, but you have to come out of the closet yes. or something. So he's like, you can't just go, oh, let me just go back to the end of the play. He's like, no, you got to watch that whole thing because you said something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> he must really like the play. Yes. So yeah, he finds Rachel McAdams at the art place, which... In watching it, if I had to play, like he comes off as real creepy. Is it? He it it it's is those rules of time travels. He knows a lot that I think would be off-putting, mm -hmm. but 
it plays out here nicely. And so he learns that, like, oh, I can't divulge mm-hmm. everything. It's like, okay, let's go back a little further to that. You, know, you, have, to, you have to be natural, and he, he's basically using this as a reconnaissance uh, moment mm-hmm. to find out where this other guy who she started dating in the missed opportunity to prevent that from happening and to, you know, to say, no, you should be with me, which, mm-hmm. can, like I said, could have been creepy if it wasn't for the uh, Margot Robbie thing. Right. And so that he can have a natural date of saying, you don't like this party. Yeah. Let's go have you know food somewhere else, just mm-hmm. the two of us, and get to know each other. And it, it works really well. Right. They, they, they walk home. They walk home, which, as she says... It's a long walk. Do you know how long that walk was? No, I mean, they give the addresses. Did you look it up? I did look it up. It's a six-mile walk. Oof. Is there anything in your life that you've walked for, love or otherwise? Well, I am notoriously lazy. I I mean, I've walked across London when I visited, but that was just for sightseeing. Mm. But for something I love just for the heck of it, no, I I don't think I've gone very far. The most I could think of is I walked across most of Washington, D.C. to get pizza. And I love that pizza. And I mapped it out. I mapped it out. It was five miles. So this Listen. guy loves Rachel McAdams one mile more than I love pizza. Well, and you got to think of like the, the pace they're showing. They're not going at a fast clip. So you're thinking like at best a 20 minute mile. So mm-hmm. that's like two, three hours. Well, and not knowing London, but I was like, it's probably not a straight line. No, they do not have straight lines out there. So yeah. I think it's cute. I think it does mm-hmm. show that these two are destined to be together and that he does genuinely mm. like this girl and she genuinely yeah. likes him back no matter what the timeline is. Yeah, and it's like we get several of the, the again, I'll say it again, of the, the old stereotype of romantic comedies of the meet cute. We get the in the dark, then at the, the making a ass of himself mm-hmm. at the photo gallery, yep. and then a genuinely good first date mm-hmm. at the restaurant from leaving a party she does not want to be a part of. Mm-hmm. And then they hook up. And I found this kind of amusing of, from her perspective, it's one date, but from his, it's three. So they both kind of follow that old, wait until the third <laughs> date. <laughs> well, I, I did write down, I was like, he is trying to get things, quotey yeah. fingers, perfect. And there is cuteness to that like oh i'm going to move your shoes so i don't trip over it but it's like it, it is that kind of thing it's like we've all been there it's like oh our first date that was awkward second date we got a little bit better third date okay we're really uh jiving with each other now it moves nicely into like we're going into a courting period you know mm. it's like we're, we're doing our day-to-day well, i think that that music well, montage actually works in this film which it feels more like you would do that in a tv show like oh we need to have the pastime let's have a music interlude well yeah and and going back to the the him redoing the sex uh the first sex encounter Mm -hmm. over and over it 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 shows of don't let the enemy of uh good be perfect or don't let perfect be the enemy of good whatever the phrase is of of allow those awkward moments he's Mm -hmm. starting to learn this is establishing the starting to learn of you don't have to let it be perfect. Right. Allow the moments to breathe. And that's why I think in that montage, we're seeing their lives just unfold. We're not seeing him time travel. We get hints that he does use it at mm-hmm. this time period later on, saying, oh, he never loses his case. Yeah. He always, but it's just like, just allow your life to be good. Right. And that's all you need. No, and I think that it is interesting, like, because, you know, he meets the parents, but he doesn't redo it because you could see them Mm -hmm. really making a meal out Mm -hmm. of some of these scenes of oh i was so awkward me and the parents oh i'm gonna do it again i'm gonna do it again so i have it's like no they let certain things Mm -hmm. play out which Mm -hmm. i think is charming and it shows that he isn't pressing the redo button so much Mm -hmm. i also respect that montage for um not holding the hand of the audience because i wrote down that uh there's a great character of his younger sister, Kit Kat. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, for one, uh, you know, we're, we're siblings, we're, we're close. I love when movies show that siblings don't have to hate each other, that they can right. have a good... Now, they're very, you know, they're very close in this movie, but that's, that's fine. This mm-hmm. is realistic. And I love that they show her meeting... Uh, Rachel McAdams' character, Mary, mm-hmm. and that they, they love each other, but there's no, like, dialogue. There's no, right. oh, here's my sister. Here's, like, no. this. It just treats it, it just like, treats you know it who like, this is. You know who this is. You know that they like each other. And and, and I just, I respect a film that that respects its audience. Mm-hmm. You know? well, and I want to, since we've already brought up the sister, mm-hmm. a thing that this movie does better than most time travel movies 
is it lays the foundation for other scenes so early on mm -hmm. that in rewatching it, you get like how smart it is. Yeah. Because they lay a dilemma with the sister so early on that you do not catch it yeah. the first time. And in rewatching, you go, oh crap. There's all these hints that you gloss over because much like the brother, you're not seeing her problems. Mm -hmm. Is she says it so early on, like, oh, I get fired so much. Oh, mm -hmm. relationships. And it's yeah. building up to that moment where it's like, oh, if I had seen sooner, yeah. I could have helped you. And I think that's also a very honest way that people look at life. Like, if I had known sooner, I could have helped you. Why didn't you? you know, yeah, why, all these things. And I think it does it so well. And why I love this uh, time travel movie is, like, the very first open narration tells you something that gets resolved at the end. And you, you think of, oh, it's just a character development for Bill Nye. Mm. And then you get learn at the very end, which we'll touch upon, that it's like, no, he's changed something. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know it, just like the main character didn't know it. No, and I think... Just in general, time travel movies either are really genius or awful. I'm looking at you, Looper. <laughs> it's like, I'm willing to like suspend my disbelief because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, and we're going to talk about what this does right and what this does wrong, but I think this one is very smart in how it handles its um, beginning, middle, and end and saying, no, 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 we have things mapped out. Mm -hmm. it, it progresses on to sh to meeting Margot Robbie again. Again, yes. yeah. I, and I like this. This 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 was, I really, again, he watched the play three times because mm -hmm. he kept screwing up talking to her and her, her friend. Right. Uh, but I love the temptation to use your powers for evil. For evil, in essence, to say, I can cheat on my girlfriend. And no one would and ever know. No one would ever know. I would be the only one to know. But it's that great thing of, he already knows that this is not who he wants to be with. Mm -hmm. He tried with her, and it's that, that joke of women don't know what they want. It's like, oh, meet me at the beginning of summer, meet me at the end of the summer. It's like, oh, she's just she's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's not for me. Whereas Rachel McAdams, who is also stunningly beautiful, but they try to make her say, oh, she looks like a chump monk. It's like, this is who I want <laughs> to be with. Yeah. Um, so he's like, this is the thing of, I'm tempted, but I clearly don't want this. And he goes immediately home and proposes to her. Mm -hmm. no, and I think, I mean, it's the romantic part yeah. of the romantic comedy mm -hmm. of that. You, you, it's, it is set up to make you like, yeah. oh, he's going to do something. And then it's always going to be in the back of his mind. And he mm -hmm. can never really admit it. But yeah. no, it dangles you. And then he's like, no, no, I know who I am. Like, and you yeah. feel good about that. Yeah. Like, oh, you made a good decision. You, a good you didn't have to go back and change it. Yeah. And then again, it's like that, that good is better than perfect. He tried uh, one proposal that didn't work, and then he tried another over-the-top proposal, and it, she didn't realize it was an over-the-top proposal. It just seemed like a normal, just you and her, mm -hmm. and it's like, that's all you needed. And it's, again, him starting to learn that you don't have to make everything perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Um, things not being perfect yeah. is the wedding. Mm -hmm. That is oh, yeah. a disaster movie. Oh, yeah. That's that's like the worst timed wedding. And he asked her, do you want a different day? And she's like, no, this is this is a great story. And he accepts that. Yeah. And yes. he accepts that. And yeah, he changes the best mans. But that's, that's all. He that's cute. That's cute because he ends up with his dad. And I love when his dad says, I screwed up the speech. And he's like, no, you no, don't no, 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 do it, dad. And it's like, no, I'm going to go fix that. It. <laughs> and then you see it. And, and, and after... They get married. Rachel McAdams has this great line of, so it begins, we'll have lots and lots of types of days. Mm -hmm. And that's, again... It's setting up. What you what you learn in this of just enjoy the days you have. Exactly. Well, I think I'm going to be coming from these next parts because we're moving from mm -hmm. a marriage into child rearing. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, kids. And I have two kids. And I said, this, though, you know, sugar-coated, is a very accurate portrayal of having kids and how your life changes like you are tired the you, you are not doing the things you used to do and i think it is a very good portrayal of having kids in you know a romantic way you know yeah. you're obviously not seeing the oh i'm up at 2 a.m and i want to kill myself yeah but i think it shows like oh you are very happy and i think we're moving into that second rule that comes mm -hmm. out that really changes the flavor of this yes movie. it's the if you have kids mm -hmm. and you change something in the past, yes, the random events and timing can make you have a different kid. And I think I like that it made a rule change. Mm -hmm. And like you know, because Bill and I, he's like, "Oops, I forgot to tell you." I'm okay with that whoops yeah. because it allows him to make that mistake and going, "Oh my God, I don't have my daughter anymore," and that scares him. Oh yeah, and I can see like Bill and I. 
his son's 21. Why is he talking about kids at 21 when his, his son can't even get a girlfriend? Exactly. And it's like, yeah, maybe he should have said it when his son's born. But it's like, these are happy moments. You don't want to go born. It's like, okay. By the way. All the things you thought you could do, you can't do if you want to keep this child. Right. And it's, it allows, I mean, mm-hmm. very much like the you know, the the movie isn't holding our hands. Mm. Bill Nye, he's not holding his son. He's like, yeah. no, no, I want you to make mistakes because yeah. that's how you learn. Yeah. Oh, I can no yeah. longer go that far back. And I think it is heartbreaking because he was trying to save his sister mm-hmm. and realizing I it's, it's it goes back to that this or that. It's yeah. like, I cannot save you because if I do, I don't have my daughter and I love my daughter more yeah. than my sister. And that's a hard thing to you well, know grapple with. And I, I think with the sister trying to save Kit Kat, it was, I can... I can stop what's caused your issues by stopping you being with this terrible guy. Mm. Whereas Mary, you know, Rachel McAllen's character says, like, she has to solve her own problems. Right. And and even using time travel to solve uh, Kit Kat's problems, like, yeah, you you solved the underlying issue, but her tendencies were still there. So by making this consequence saying you have to make a choice between the family you love mm-hmm. and the sister you love and it's like well you don't you just have to get your sister to acknowledge her own problems right and yeah. i think that takes the burden of you know the savior mm-hmm. off his shoulders like listen i can't go back and change everyone's mm-hmm. life to save everyone but i do have the knowledge to say like hey i can help you make a better future with knowing of the past yep and i think this is also where bill nighy teaches him like there's different ways of living Mm -hmm. there's you know living your day-to-day life and then there's living in the moment Mm -hmm. like and i think that is a great message to tell the audience Mm -hmm. like your day may seem mundane but Mm -hmm. if you go back and kind of look as like no no no, i did a lot of stuff today it may not have been like monumental like i didn't change the world but i had a good day yeah it's like the stress of work, the stress of traveling can be undone of just a different perspective of this building is beautiful mm. and hey, I, I actually did well at work despite me thinking I was going to do terrible or hey, that person who gave me my sandwich was really nice today. I mm-hmm. should, you know, appreciate that. And it also shows that like just using the powers for for just simple things because mm-hmm. early on we kind of glossed over it. They said, oh, Ancestors used it to get money and was not happy right. at all. Uh, Bill and I used it to read. He just wanted to read books. And then, you know, we have Tim here just wants to have, find love and have a happy family. It's like mm-hmm. these simple things make the power useful. These over-grandized trying to control everything makes you miserable. Right. And I think that's, I mean, that at the, at the nugget of it, that is mm-hmm. a good message mm-hmm. to take away from it. It's like, your life can be yeah. amazing without... The time travel, you yeah. just have to take that slowed approach mm-hmm. and kind of look at it. And, and so, I appreciate that. And so we have all these rules to now get us to the gut punch that this director loves to put in every single one of his movies. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and that is Bill Nye gets cancer. Now, yeah. the first time I saw this and uh, they got the phone call, Rachel McAdams and um, Donald Gleason are fighting because of a mistake and Donald is trying to time travel to make it rise like you're not leaving and then they get a phone call. I honestly thought he was dead mm, in that phone yeah. call. And then it's like, no, we find out he is dying. Mm-hmm. But it is that thing of we can't use the powers to undo things. Right. And that's where we learn uh, that I mentioned earlier of time travel has been going on this whole time and we didn't even know it before anything because in the opening um, narration he said my dad retired at 50. Yeah. And who does that? And then we find out it's like yeah the only people who retire at 50 are the time travelers who want (laughs) to play ping pong with their kid. Yeah. And you see Donald Gleason's face going oh my entire life you've known this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's like, because we're going it from the perspective of Tim, Donald Gleason, yeah, yeah, yeah. is you don't get to see all the things that Bill Nye he's mm-hmm. been doing in the background. Because he does have these moments of knowing smiles, yes. twinkle in his eye, that only Bill Nye he yeah. can do without ever saying a word. It's like, you just see him knowing, yeah. like, oh, no, no, we've yeah, done, done this before, before, but I'm going to let you play it out. I mean, yeah, it's not respecting the audience, because when we talked about Kit Kat and trying to solve her life and going back to the original New Year's Eve party, they like, she just punches a guy that she doesn't know in the face, and everyone is shocked, except Bill Nye, because he's watching his son drag his sister away. It's like, oh, I know what you just did. Yeah, you I, just, know you you did. Just, I don't know exactly what happened, but well, you, let it play you changed something. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's for the uh, best. It'll be fine. You'll figure it no, out. No, and I and 
I like a movie that doesn't have to explain every mm. actor's action through every single. It's like mm. no, you know the story. Do you know the characters? And I think that also makes the very ending that gut punch of yeah. when he goes and he sees his dad for the last time. Mm-hmm. You know, his dad has died already. Yes. And so he goes back and he plays ping pong with him. And his dad already knows. He goes, oh, is it that, that time? time? Yeah. You can see that, like, probably Bill Nye, he did the same thing, like... With his dad. With his... It was something in his past yes. of, I loved visiting this part, but I have a son and then I have a daughter. And once they're born, I cannot go back there. Mm-hmm. And again, it's this great, on rewatch, you have this foreshadowing of an earlier scene of them just playing ping pong and Bill Nye is just saying, oh, this great kid, he's he's winning, but there will soon be tears in mm-hmm. eyes. And you go, oh yeah, he's just you know he's, having fun. He's waxing And poetic. then at the very end, that's the scene they go back to and Donald is crying. Weeping. Yeah. Because this know, is the last time he gets to see his dad. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, do, we, do we want to talk about the goof? Yeah, we can talk about the goof. So this is... This is them breaking their own rules. And mm-hmm. we all talk, you know, we've talked about time travel movies following their own rules for the best. They go back beyond the birth of his kids mm-hmm. to when Donald is a kid and Bill Nye is his father so they can walk on the beach. And their, you know, no win prize basically is if we don't change anything, it okay. should be fine. Right. Which kind of undercuts the thing of I don't get to see my dad again. It's like, well, you do, you just don't ever get to have anything new. Yes. You can and so, replay this. In, in essence, it's you get to relive a memory just like us watching a home video or just thinking about it, things. Mm-hmm. You don't get to ask the advice. You don't get so it's still that gut punch of this is the last time I get to have a new conversation with right. you. Right. And it's like I will forgive the movie. Mm-hmm. It's one blunder yeah, yeah. because it does so yeah. much right and it's so charming about it. I will forgive yeah. at the very end yeah. this one moment mm-hmm. of kind of like, well, yes, it breaks its own rules, but I kind of like, uh, 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 very much in the uh, community, I'll allow it. Yeah, no, it's all, I'll, I'll allow it and it's it's just super sweet and it earns it. It does. It, you know, it earns a yeah. lot of things. And I think it allows the audience to say, like, you know what? It's At, at this point in the movie, I am so I'm charmed s- by this that it's like, you can kind of do whatever you want and I will let it go. Well, and it's what this director has done in all his romantic comedies mm-hmm. of you think, oh, this is just boy meets girl. And then yeah. it's like, oh, no, there's also a really great sibling relationship. Oh, there's also a really great friendship here. And then it ends up being about fathers and sons or, you know, just parents and kids in general. Mm -hmm. It is just so amazing of a movie. It is now... uh, I have this, you know, ongoing theory, and I'll probably talk about it when we hit them again, that, guys, if you don't like rom-coms or ladies, if you don't like rom-coms, there's someone in your life who does. Mm -hmm. And it's good to have one that you can stand or really enjoy. Mm -hmm. This is my current go to if someone says let's watch a rom-com this is i've had different ones in the past love actually was one of them Mm -hmm. iq was one i have had romantic comedies that i like this is my go-to it has not been you know usurped by a newer movie no it's like i think that does kind of go into like you know who would you recommend this to i think yes it is a great date movie Mm -hmm. um to bring out because like yes it's got it's it's not too sappy yeah it's not too fluffy but it hits all the points i think it's also uh good for new parents Mm -hmm. because it's like i I, i'd like to think that you're watching this and you're smiling and then you get to uh the kid parts and you're smiling because you've been watching this movie for four hours because your kids keep waking you up and you'll get to the end and you'll cry and the tears of uh, a new parent because they're so sleepy and they're Mm. watching a good movie makes me happy (laughs) yeah but i think it's also it's like it is just genuinely do you want a feel good Mm -hmm. film and I would recommend, like, no, if you just want a movie that you can laugh and feel good and maybe have all the feelings. Mm -hmm. When I first watched this movie, it was a terrible gut punch Mm because we had just lost both of our parents. Yes. To cancer. Yes. And so one of my friends was coming to visit. I had heard great things about this because I did not watch in the theaters. Um, Mm -hmm. I got one and first uh, made it to home video. And I'm watching this and I'm like, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. And then it gets to the end. And I am weeping, ugly crying, but I am happy because I watched it. It mm-hmm. is. It was cathartic. It was that sweet, 
I learned everything that I needed. Uh, it helped me move on. I am so happy that this is in my collection. Mm. I will keep it. I will suggest it to everyone. This this is a a must watch. I feel oh, yeah. rom com if you if you feel inclined. No, and I think because I watched it before I had kids mm -hmm. and really enjoyed it. I rewatched it for this podcast mm. with kids, and I got more enjoyment out of those scenes of them being married, having kids. And I think there is something about a not. It's not quite coming of age, but a episodic thing of that takes you through your different parts of life. And I think this movie does it so well where the characters are so genuine about their relationships. Yeah. And yeah, no, I think I, I would those, those are my recommendations. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, we, we like to, you know, end it with like some trivia jokes, memories. Yeah. Um, one thing that I liked because there is a lot of trivia is the one thing I liked is that when Bill Nye, he's on the beach with, you know, young Tim, that that was actually the director's son. And I think that's kind of cute in its mm -hmm. own right of like, no, no, we're going to put a kid up there. I'm well, going to put my kid. I'm going to put my kid in and then again to, to the theme. It's like, now this is a moment in time that I can remember oh. and revisit. It's, it's, it's great. So what do we have coming up next? So coming up next is the movie Babe. Ooh, Ooh an another British charming uh, one. Charming movie. We're in our charming movies. Charming, <laughs> charming British bacon. Well, we hope you enjoyed this podcast. This is new for us. Uh, we'll hopefully work out the kinks as things go on. And yeah, thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time for Babe. Bye. Bye. <laughs>